Hello. This RDM Byte will provide an overview of disabilities in the context of data management. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain the importance of considering disabled researchers in data management plans, explain the importance of considering accessibility for the public and patients in data management, list the seven principles of universal design, Evaluate how disability can be considered in the data management strategies for two subfields of biological research. Begin to create an accessibility guide for data management in your own subfield. Disability access is a vital component of considering EDIJ in data management. Disabled people should have equitable access to data throughout the data cycle from collection through to analysis, sharing and reuse. Disabled researchers need to be able to access data to do their work effectively, so a lack of consideration of this aspect of data management will inadvertently exclude disabled researchers or make their jobs more challenging. Disabled members of the public also need to be considered in data management, as they can often be affected by biological research or, by the, or be the data subjects themselves, and thus should have the ability to access and understand, to a reasonable degree, the data that involves them, whether directly or indirectly. They also need to be considered in terms of accessibility in the collection process. If your collection processes inadvertently exclude disabled participants, then this will lead to bias in your sample, and thus damage the scientific conclusions which can be drawn from your data. It is important to bear in mind that accessibility and availability are not the same thing. This was explained in more depth in our previous videos on EDIJ and data management, so take a look at those if you haven't already. If your data has been placed behind a Beware of the Leopard sign, specifically if there are obstacles to accessing it, then it is not accessible, even if you have made it available in theory. There are a number of reasons to consider disabled researchers in your data management plans. It is key to ethical science that people are not excluded from working in the field due to their identities. And as such, equitable access to data is important for all science as disabled researchers must be able to do their jobs without obstacles in order to not be excluded. Additionally, diversity in research teams has been shown to increase innovation, creativity and problem solving abilities. Better research questions and study design is often a result of consultation with patients and other impacted groups. And if these people are included as research staff, this means these improvements to the scientific process are present from the start of the process. Improving accessibility for disabled people also means that accessibility overall improves so there is better compliance with open research ideals. There are also legal considerations, such as the Equality Act, and likely additional local and funder policy aspects which might stipulate accessibility requirements. As we have already mentioned, it is also important that the general public can access data that involves them or will impact on them. This can improve trust in science and ensure people feel able to participate in future research with the confidence that researchers are fully taking their interests into account. They cannot give informed consent to participate in data collection without understanding the data being collected, and this is therefore a key component of ethical study design. Building consultations, partnership models and lived experience into data management plans leads to improved research with meaningful benefits for the groups most impacted by the research. Asking disabled people about the types of questions they think need asking and how they would want to be included in the research process is key for avoidance of harm. The Equality Act and other local and funder policies also apply for public accessibility. And as we have previously mentioned, exclusion of disabled people from the collection process can lead to bias in the data and faulty scientific conclusions. Universal design is a set of principles which, when applied, lead to universal usage of a resource. 
The principles were initially designed with physical space in mind, but can be applied elsewhere, including in data management. The key goal is to allow access, understanding and use to the greatest extent in an independent way and without needing adaptations for individuals, including those with disabilities. The seven principles are equitable use. People can use it in the same way, regardless of individual identity without segregation. Flexibility in use. Choice in use method and adaptability to individual requirements. Simple and intuitive use. Low complexity and accessibility for different skill levels and languages. Perceptible information. Device compatibility, visual elements and clarity of instructions. Tolerance of user error. Build in methods to minimize errors and fail safes. Low physical effort. Removal of barriers to access. Size and space for approach and use. This is less applicable to data in many cases, but may apply to physical data sets or specimens or to specific types of hardware needed for access. Not all of these will always be applicable, but they provide a good baseline for considerations which might be important when designing a data management plan. We will now consider two subfields of biological research. The first is autism research. Many autism researchers are currently working on research questions centered on causative mechanisms and cure development for autism, which often doesn't align with the priorities of autistic people. For this reason, consulting with autistic people or including them in research teams from the initial stages of study design can improve research questions and the benefits derived from studies in the long term. The partnership model, rather than treating autistic people as participants or patients, can be helpful to use for this type of work. Informed consent and the ability to remove data after earlier involvement are also important to consider. Many autistic people also have learning disabilities, so providing information in an accessible format may require additional considerations. Often, carers and parents provide consent for involvement on behalf of autistic people, and it is also vital to consider whether this is permissible. Does it conform to ethical study design? Inadvertent exclusion of autistic people from wider research due to communication differences or other obstacles might also lead to biased research. It is often the case that autistic people interpret terms and instructions differently to neurotypical people. And as such, these sorts of barriers need to be considered when designing data collection and recruitment processes to avoid biased data collection. Sharing of data collected for this sort of work can also pose challenges. Are there harms or potential impacts on future generations, such as eugenics or insurance difficulties, which could occur as a result of this data being widely accessible? The data collected may be considered sensitive and therefore might be best kept private rather than open access. Our second case study is cancer research. This encompasses a huge range of data types, so these considerations are just some generic questions and issues to think about within the field as a whole. Clinical trials require trust in science and the process of data collection, as patients need to consent to involvement. Making data accessible to those patients and members of the public is a way to improve this trust and encourage the public to get involved with scientific research. Patients also need to give informed consent, and again, this means they must understand the data being collected, so accessibility of that data is important in that process. Understanding the data can also help patients make informed decisions about their illness. Utilising the lived experiences of patients can also help with designing improved and more meaningful research questions and can provide valuable contextual data that might otherwise be missed from more traditional data collection methods. Sharing data can again be an issue with this sort of study. Is the data sensitive or in any way identifiable due to the variables being measured? Are there potential harms arising from the data being made widely available? such as future discrimination or insurance issues. 
Again, thinking about disability access can assist with avoiding inadvertent exclusion and biased results when recruiting patients or designing collection processes for data, meaning better conclusions can be drawn from the research. We will finish with a brief task. Consider your own subfield of research. What barriers are there for disabled researchers when working with your data? Do you know any disabled researchers working in your field? Around 20% of the population are disabled, so if you don't think you know any, consider whether they might not be open about this, and if so, why? Or whether your field is simply inaccessible for them for some other reason. Does it need to be that way? Think about your data. Could you access it with sight or hearing impairments? Do your language choices around medical conditions perpetuate ideas that some might see as damaging or stigmatising? If you were a supervillain, could you think of a way to use your data in a harmful way? Try to make a list of the key considerations for your data which would make it accessible and ex inclusive to disabled people. That's the end of this video. Follow-up videos on these topics are available as RDM Bytes if you'd like to learn more.